Hi and welcome. My name is Victor Gijsbers and I teach philosophy at Leiden University in the Netherlands. In this video I want to talk about a short three-page article published in 1895 in the philosophical journal Mind by Lewis Carroll. Now when we think of Lewis Carroll we may not tend to think about philosophy. We may tend to think about his books Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass, two of the most famous children's books ever written in the English language. But Carroll, apart from being uh, an accomplished writer of children's fiction, was also an accomplished logician, who published uh, an entire book on symbolic logic and also, among other things, this three-page mind article. In this article, which, you know, doesn't really look like what you would expect a, a philosophical article in logic to look like, uh, in this article we are told a story. It's a story of two characters, Achilles and the tortoise, who meet each other and get into a discussion about logic. But lest we think that this is sort of only a kind of joke or jest article with no real philosophical content, it has actually been quite influential. There are many responses, many articles, trying to think through what goes on in this little dialogue that Lewis Carroll has written for us. So I think it will be very useful for us to take a look at what is going on in this article and then talk about some of the ways in which it has been approached by later writers. Okay, so what happens? Well, we have these two characters, Achilles and the tortoise, uh, who met each other before in Zeno's famous paradox of motion, or rather one of Zeno's famous paradoxes of motion. Right, as you may recall, the paradox of Zeno goes like this. Achilles, who is a very, very fast athletic warrior, and the tortoise, who is, of course, an extremely slow animal, uh, decide to do a racing match. Now, that doesn't sound very fair, and I guess Achilles likes fair play, so he gives the tortoise a little bit of a head start. Okay, so here's the tortoise, and here is Achilles. Well, Zeno says, what is going to happen? Well, the tortoise is going to move, and in the meantime, the Achille uh, Achilles is going to move to the point where the tortoise used to be. Then Achilles is again going to move to the point where the tortoise was now, but of course the tortoise has moved a little bit in the meantime. And so Achilles has a further task to go uh, to do. He has to move to the new position of the tortoise, who then moves a little bit further, and so on and so forth. And it really is and so on and so forth, because Zeno points out this is going to take an infinite number of steps. Right? Any time Achilles is at the old position of the tortoise, the tortoise will no longer be there. And so Achilles will have to perform an infinite number of tasks, which maybe is impossible. I mean, presumably Zeno comes up with this story in order to show that change and motion must be illusory because they lead to contradictions. Okay, we're not going to go into that, although it would be uh, uh, a great to, uh, to read some articles about that. Um, but we are going to see that in the Lewis Carroll article, we also get this kind of infinite regress, um, or an infinite series of tasks is maybe the better way to, uh, to state it. An infinite series of tasks, even though they are not about motion, but rather they are about logic, they are about reasoning. So the basic situation is this. We've got two characters, Achilles and the tortoise, and they are discussing a proof in Euclid, right? the famous mathematician. Doesn't really matter what the proof is, uh, the point is that there are two premises which together lead to a conclusion. So let's take a very simple example of that. Um, if somebody agrees that all bulldogs are dogs and also agrees that all dogs are animals, you know, that's two premises, all bulldogs are dogs and all dogs are animals, then of course that person should also agree that all bulldogs are animals, right? Because it follows from those first two sentences. Now, let's symbolically call those sentences A, B, and Z. Or if you're an American, you can call them A, B, and Z, but I'll say A, B, and Z. Um, so A, B, and Z, and Z logically follows from A and B. That's our starting situation. 
And now the tortoise says the following. The tortoise says, well, you know what? I accept A and B, but I don't accept Z. And Achilles says, well, you have to accept Z, right? It logically follows from A and B. Oh, says, says the tortoise. So what you are telling me is that A and B implies Z, right? That is the logical conditional. A and B implies Z. Yes, says Achilles. Oh, but I accept that, says the tortoise. Let's write it down. Let's call it C. So statement C is that A and B imply Z. So now the tortoise is accepting A, B, and C, which is A and B imply Z. All right, says Achilles. So now clearly you also accept Z. No, not at all, says the tortoise. Why would I accept Z? Well, because you have accepted A and B and you have accepted that A and B imply Z. And if you have accepted all of that, you've got to accept Z. Is that a truth of logic, says the tortoise, that if you accept A and B and A and B imply Z, then those three things together imply Z? Yes, says Achilles. Oh, let's write it down, says the tortoise. And of course, now we have started on this on this infinite regress, right? Because at every point, uh, the tortoise is going to say, oh, I accept all the premises, including the new one. And the new one is always the premise that all the previous premises together imply Z. So he always accepts that, but he never draws the conclusion that Z. Um, and Achilles goes along with this and they embark on the infinite task of writing down all of these um, all of these premises and of course the tortoise is never going to be uh, accepting Z. What he emphasizes again and again is that he wants to be forced by logic to accept Z and Achilles at no point manages to make logic force the tortoise to accept Z. All right, that's a droll little dialogue. Uh, but what does it tell us about logic, right? Where do we go from here? Well, it turns out that you can actually use this story to go into several different directions, to think about several different and often quite deep, um, uh, quite deep properties of logic or how we use logic or what logic is uh, and so on and so forth. So here is one way of, of understanding Lewis, the moral of Lewis Carroll's story. It would be to emphasize that apparently believing a proposition, like and, and in particular believing a proposition that is in this hypothetical form, that if A then B, or in our case, if A and B then Z, uh, then Z, ooh. if you believe, like believing such a proposition is apparently not the same thing as having the ability or the inclination to make the corresponding inferences, right? I can believe that A and B implies Z and believe A and believe B and yet fail to make the appropriate inference, right? I can fail to make the appropriate inference that I should now also believe Z and then believe Z. Right, I can fail to do that. So apparently one of the things that, that I mean, one of the lessons we might take from the Lewis Carroll story is that believing in these kinds of conditional uh, propositions is just not the same thing as having the ability of using the corresponding rules of inference as having mastered those rules of inference. Uh, and so for instance, the uh, philosopher Gilbert Ryle has expressed this in terms of the difference between knowing that and knowing how, right? And he might say that knowing that one thing implies something else is not the same thing as knowing how to infer the second thing from the first thing. Another way to express more or less the same thought would be to say that we shouldn't confuse rules of inference, right? Rules for how we ought to reason. And a rule is something that, um, you know, that, that you can follow or not follow. It describes an activity. In fact, it is the norm for an activity. Uh, so we shouldn't confuse rules for how to reason with logical truths. 
So the claim, the logical truth that A and B imply Z is not the same thing as the rule of inference that allows us to infer Z from A and B. And so what this kind of thinking would bring us to is it would bring us to a realization that logic is not just the study of a particular body of logical truths, of statements, but that logic is in some sense about rules. And that if we want to understand logic and if we want to understand the practice of logic, we have to, to go into the study of rules and we have to, this is one of Wittgenstein's famous questions, um, we have to wonder what it is to follow a rule and how we could ever learn to follow a rule and how somebody could teach us to follow a rule. So there's an entire way of thinking that takes Lewis Carroll's article and, you know, uses it to really delve into this notion uh, of the difference between truths and rules. Having done that, another way of approaching the article might uh, sort of suggest itself to us. Because I have been talking as if there is this distinction between knowing that and knowing how, right? As if there is the distinction between knowing that Z follows from A and B and knowing how to derive Z from A and B. But is that really true, right? Is it really true that you can know that A and B imply Z and yet fail to make this appropriate inference? Well, of course, I can say that I believe a and B imply Z without making the appropriate inference. That is what the tortoise is doing all the time, right? He's saying, oh, I accept that. I accept that. I accept that. I accept that. But then he doesn't do what he ought to be doing. Well, but doesn't that show that the tortoise actually doesn't really believe that A and B imply Z, right? Doesn't it show that either he fails to grasp, fails to understand the statement, a and B implies Z, or he just says that he believes it, but doesn't really believe it. Because, you know, really believing it, that's something that you should see in your actions. Right, I mean, to give an example of the, of the latter case, suppose that I say to you, I really trust you, right? I really believe you are a trustworthy person, um, but I need to go out for three minutes to, to buy something in the shop and I want you to come with me because I'm afraid you might steal some of my stuff if I leave you alone in my house. You know, if that's what I'm doing, then that first claim that I really believe that you are a trustworthy person doesn't seem to be true, right? So either I don't understand what it means to believe someone to be trustworthy, or I don't actually believe it and I'm just claiming to believe it. Let's go back to our original example, right? If somebody says, oh, I really believe that all bulldogs are dogs and I really believe that all dogs are animals, but why should I believe that all bulldogs are animals, right? What's going on? Is he failing to understand certain rules of inference or is he just failing to understand the meaning, apparently, uh, of the claims that he has been accepting, right? I mean, put so, so bartly together, Surely anyone who understands the meaning of those claims ought to be someone who makes the appropriate inference, right? To think about it in this way, I'm not saying that it is necessarily the right way, but it's an influential way of thinking. Um, to think about it in this way would be to think that, you know, belief and uh, grasping the meaning of something has a lot to do, is very intimately connected to inference. That the meaning of a sentence is more or less defined by what we can infer from it and what it can be inferred from. And that believing something is committing oneself to those inferences and making them when it is appropriate. And this is the, uh, the an idea that, you know, in general would be known as something like inferentialism. And so this is also a moral that one might draw from the Achilles and the tortoise story, right? So the first moral I suggested was that Maybe we should make a careful distinction between on the one hand, rules of inference, and on the other hand, the truths of logic. And they're not the same. And we can see that because the tortoise accepts the truths, but doesn't follow the rules. But another way of thinking about this is that actually we can't pull apart the rules and the truths. 
And that what is going on in the story is that the tortoise's inability or at least failure to follow the rules to make the appropriate inferences shows that he, he doesn't believe the propositions or doesn't grasp or understand the truths, right? So this would just be to not pry them apart and to understand the, uh, the failure of the tortoise in that way. I want to talk about one final way of, of extracting a moral or a lesson from the Achilles and the tortoise paper. And this one I found in a very nice paper on Lewis's Carroll's, on Lewis Carroll's paper, a very nice little paper called Required by Logic, written by John Woods and published in 2017. And so here is what John Woods says. He says, look, the tortoise says, okay, I accept the premise A, I accept the premise B, I accept that if you accept A and B, you ought to accept Z, and I'm not accepting Z. I want to be forced by logic to accept Z. Well, says Woods, the tortoise claims, in effect, that he can't be forced by logic to accept Z. And, Woods said, Woods says, he is absolutely right. If you want logic to force someone to adopt a conclusion, you want something that is impossible. Logic will never force someone to adopt a conclusion. And we can see that very easily, right? Suppose that somebody accepts A and somebody accepts B and somebody accepts that A and B imply Z and somebody even accepts that if you accept all of that, you ought to accept Z. And then he looks at Z and thinks, well, but I don't believe Z. Z is pretty unbelievable to me, right? What ought he do? Ought he believe Z because it follows from A and B and, you know, he sees all of that and he accepts A and B? You know, that's one possibility. He could accept Z, but he could also drop one of the premises, right? He could also say, well, I no longer believe A or I no longer believe B. Or he could drop his belief that we're following a, a rule that is worth following, right? He could say, oh, well, there must be something wrong with this inference. Or he could do none of those things and just throw up his hands and say, I don't understand what's going on. I, you know, I, I seem to be in something of a logical bind, but I'm certainly not going to accept Z just because I don't know what else to do. And all of that could be rational. Right? It could be rational to accept the conclusion. It could be rational to drop one of the premises. It could be rational to have doubts about the validity of the inference. And it could even be rational, if you don't know what to do, to just say, I don't know what to do. Right? So I'm not changing any of my beliefs at the moment. Um, I'm just confused. All of that could be rational. But what is rational is not something that logic is going to tell you. Right? Logic can't do that. Logic can never tell you whether you should give up the premise or accept the conclusion or change your logic or, you know, just leave it be for the moment because you can't get any clarity. That's not what logic is for. That's not what logic is about. Um, so in that sense, we could say logic never forces us, right? That's, that's just not the kind of thing that logic can do. And so if we read Lewis's Carol, Lewis Carroll's paper, with an emphasis on this phrase, I want to be forced by logic or I want to be required by logic, as the John Woods paper is called, required by logic, then the answer is that actually nothing is going wrong. The tortoise is just showing us the truth that logic doesn't force us to believe anything. All right, so these are just three possible morals to draw from this, uh, from this little Lewis Carroll story. And as I said, there's an entire literature talking about this and, and trying to figure out what is going on. Um, I think it's a really fun way into thinking about logic. And um, I hope thinking about some of these ways of dealing with the Lewis Carroll, Achilles and Tortoise situation have been stimulating to you and will stimulate you to search out more literature about these issues. Thanks.